Hey guys, Greg here, Let's Solve Jewels and Stones, leak code number 771. Now it's called an easy, but there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it, and I'm gonna show you both. So we're given a string jewels, and that's representing the types of stones that are jewels. And we're also given stones representing the stones that you have. So each character in stones is a type of stone that you have, and you want to know how many of the stones you have are jewels. So basically some of the stones you have are jewels, and some of them are not. And letters are case sensitive. So lowercase a is considered a different type of stone from capital A. Okay, so basically we're saying if you have jewels is A and capital A, well, the stones is a different string where we have multiple of these things. Okay, there's no need to have duplicates in jewels. So this is going to be unique here. These are the types of stones that are jewels. Okay, so then if you have these stones, you have lowercase a, which is a jewel. You have these two, which are also jewels, but then you have these four Bs, which since they are not in the string of jewels, well, then that's not going to count to your output. So your total output is the number of stones that are jewels. And so that is the first three. So we'd return the count of them, which is three. And in this example here, we see clearly that jewels is just lowercase z, but we have two uppercase z's as stones. Those are not going to be helpful. So we actually have zero jewels. Okay, so the first thing we do is initialize like a count variable. So this is the thing we'd want to return. This is the number of stones that we have that are jewels. And the brute force solution would be to first iterate through our stones. So we'd go through each of the stones and we wanna know if that's a jewel or not. It is a jewel if it is in this string here. Okay, so these are both strings. If this stone is in this jewel string, well then it is a jewel. And if it's not, well then it's not a jewel. So what we do here is we would take this character we'd say is it in jewels yes it is okay so the count is going to go up by one and we can move this forward to look at the next character so is this stone a jewel well it is in this jewel string so yes it is we are going to increase this so that's going to go up to two we'd move this over again we would look through the jewel string yes it is and then for all of these b's well we're going to see is it in jewels no it's not is it in jewels no it's not we're going to keep moving forward and we're not going to increase our count because it wasn't a jewel if we were to say that jewels is length n and stones is length m there's no reason for them to have the same length so they're different variables and as you can see this is length 2 and this is length 7 so the time complexity of this algorithm is actually going to run in big o of m times n time okay so what that means here we have a times because it means for each of these things we're going to go through the entirety length of this so for this we're going to scan through the whole string over here and then for this we're going to scan through the whole string over here we keep doing that and that is actually going to give an o of m times n time you could picture two for loops basically we would loop through the stones and within that loop we could also loop through the jewels to see if it was in there we don't want to do that because that is m by n and we can actually do this much faster so the way to make this faster is to more easily discover if a stone is a jewel. Right now, as is, with this being a string, we actually have to see if this character is in that string. Well, that itself is an n operation, okay? It takes n time to go through this n length string. But we can actually use a hash set, or in Python, just a set. And that way, if we turn jewels into a set of characters, so it's basically a set of its characters, it'll be a set of a, uh, lowercase a and capital, a here. That way, if we wanted to know if any of these stones is a jewel, well, we don't have to loop through the entire end string. We can actually just say if it's in the set. And while that might be similar syntactically, it's very different in the runtime. Because if our set has, well, this should have n things because the string was length n, so it's going to have n things in it. But even though the set is size n, it is actually a O of 1 or constant time lookup to see if any character is in the set. Because it uses hashing, hashing is a slow but constant operation and so it is a constant time operation we just ask if that stone character is in the set that is an o of one time complexity and so that is going to give a constant solution to see if a stone is a jewel that means that we end up doing just for each of these characters constant to see it constant to check constant to check so the runtime of this is going to be big o of n plus m which is way way faster than n times m because for each of these characters we don't have to look through the whole string we just do a constant lookup.
Now, first, I'm actually going to write the O of N times M solution so that you can see it. So what we do here is we'd basically have a count starting at zero for each stone in the stones. So stone is going to be a character or just a one letter string. We'll say if that stone is in jewels. OK, so when we do this, it's getting a Boolean saying if the stone is in the jewels, it actually has to look through that whole jewels string. So this itself is O of N times M. We can say, OK, if that stone is in the jewels, then the count is is going to go up by one and that's actually going to work just fine we could return the count and leak code would actually be happy with that that will actually give you a submission however you don't want to do it like this if you're practicing algorithms you want to write the oven plus m solution where it's exactly the same except then outside here just once we actually build a set we'll just call it s it's equal to the set of jewels and that's actually going to work just fine like that because a set if you pass it an iterable like a string well it's just going to turn it into basically basically a set of all of its different components. It would basically have A, capital A, and whatever other jewels you might have. It's going to have a set of those characters. So we get S as a set of jewels. We'll get our count. We'll go through for each stone in stones. But instead of if stone is in jewels, it's just if stone is in S. Because that way, that turns it down from an O of N lookup here to an O of 1 lookup. So that makes it O of N to get the set. And then we have an additional O of M to get our stones. We return the count. And that is also going to work much faster. It actually claims that it's slower. And that's because for smaller inputs, this actually might be slower because hashing is slow. But for large inputs, it's actually going to be significantly faster because it greatly improves the runtime. Okay, so as we said, the time complexity is big O of N plus M. And the space complexity, we are storing a set now. And so the space complexity of this solution is actually O of N because we are storing the jewels. And by the way, it's actually not clear which one of N or M is the jewels. So you would have to say to the interviewer, it's O of N plus M, where N is the length of jewels and M is the length of stones. And it's also space complexity of O of N. I hope this is helpful, guys. Drop a like if it was and have a great day. Bye-bye.